Okay, so as much as you have the ability to, Nick, um, maybe just bring everybody, bring people up to speed as to what what, what you face this week. Because ultimately, what we were talking about is we were talking about how in life, um, getting traction in life, being fulfilled, fired up, on fire, really comes from being focused on our values and the mission and the direction that we choose, having control um, and being really clear with the direction that we're going. Now, what happens? This is what I always talk about. There's two different ways we get knocked off course. We get knocked off course by those shiny things. They're like, ooh, I want some of that. And it takes us off course. And that's all the immediate gratification stuff that you and I are very, very well versed in, in sedating. It. The other side of it is that we have these life experiences that come. And recently it's COVID. Um, there's, I mean, it, it's endless the number of things that are chucked at us on a daily basis, particularly if you're married, you've got kids, you've got business, you've got like the midlife triangle of chaos is, is something many of us are just thrust into. And it's like, well, fuck it. I guess we just got to deal with it. So <clears throat> when these challenges are thrown at us, oftentimes, I'm just going to, I'm just going to use the term Neanderthals like you and me, Nick, we're really good at running away from things. You know, whether it's uh, sedation in the forms of drugs, alcohol, um, over-exercising, which both you and I have both been uh, sort of guilty of participating in. And, and again, both you and I, you and I have had this conversation because we have this thought that, you know, if we, if we sedate constructively, right? Like exercise, what's wrong with exercise? that it's an okay thing, but it doesn't really matter. It's all just sedation. We're running away from the feelings and the, 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 the stuff that's being thrust at us on a daily basis. And this week was just another example for you. So uh -huh. just, just give us the, the synopsis, the, the, the shortened version, because I know there's some sensitive stuff that's going on. What happened oh, yeah. this week? No, I just woke up and then I just got an email that, um, like, so many people are used to getting get emails all the time and then I open one up and I'm going through some some stuff that we can't really go too much in depth but everybody has something and I opened it up and it was something that's beyond my control I can't do anything about and I have to deal with it in some way so but normally um, you know a couple maybe not even a year ago I would have just just started spouting off and uh, calling names and reacting emotionally, which is yeah. what we like to do as Neanderthals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> reacting and not processing and seeing any side of where the other person's coming from, or even like how taking responsibility, how we got here in the first place, and just having to and then having to deal with it in a constructive way okay, and, so, that, and just so just so that anybody is listening to this this can happen in with your physical life you know you get an injury this can happen in your relationships something's not working this can happen in business how many times does this happen in business where something doesn't work properly a client a boss uh something something just happens this can happen even when you are doing things for others in the in the, in in service, but you're really just draining your tank because you're really not doing things that are filling yourself up. So you don't have that abundance of energy. In this case, balance. It was it was like relationship wise. But uh, so needless to say, this stuff happens. You get this emotional reaction, and then Neanderthal response is ah, right. Yep. Okay. So then it's, now it's just breathe, sit back, and then react with or act in intention. So, okay. so it maybe share just for people because we all get triggered. Yep. Okay, and then we react. That's yep. human. So, what what are some of the things that you're you're doing now, Nick? That that you feel that are less destructive as far as just being able to self-regulate? What are some of those tools? So meditation, for one, uh, is huge. But in even saying that in this particular instance, when I did go to meditate after, 
a bunch of negative stuff happens when you're sitting in your own thoughts and then the Patriot missile game. So after that, I was able to calm, regulate, and be able to move forward with the rest of my day without reacting. Okay. So, but yeah, to get to that point though, yeah, it's, okay. it's hard. Man. So this is, this is the part that I think that, that so many of us, um, not just guys, this is guys and gals. It's, it's not just business parents. It's, it's all of us. I mean, we all get triggered. And when that occurs, um, I can tell, I mean, I don't know how long I was told to meditate. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not going to meditate. Uh, I would go for a run. I would go for a drive. And all those things are good ways of just self-regulating. Because the, the reality of it is, as soon as you're frustrated, triggered, whatever it is, half your brain shuts off. You don't have the ability to actually go into constructive things like the Patriot Missile Game or the Stack or whatever it is. Using the tools consciously require us to first be self-regulated. So being in the middle of a fight, that's when all the things are said that aren't supposed to be said, right? <laughs> so yeah, I mean, doing high intensity exercise, meditating, but just basically calming and self-regulating the nervous system such that you can ask the right questions, I think is what you're saying, right? Oh, no, thousand percent. And it's, it's just, it's hard to get to that point where you can sit in that that energy in those thoughts and yeah I meditated for 20 minutes with a yeah a bunch of negative stuff going through my mind okay so then what <laughs> happens I think right. what I'm hearing you say is you got stories that are still running creating an emotional response yeah. and this is where a lot of people get I, well, I'm saying a lot of people this is where all of us at some point in time get trapped because these stories whether they're conscious in your brain like they were for you in the meditation or if they're running subconsciously occupying space and energy they're they're running they're creating an emotion and whether we realize it or not it's running us at some level right so the question that i always ask just like you is well as soon as i have a story that's operating i'm going to be looking for evidence to support it and then i'm going to be looking for people and and other things to support this belief system and i'm going to run wild with it and as a good old neanderthal i'm going to go bash things right this is where we create shit, right yep. and, and it's not that we're all perfect with this but this is this is where the game starts to get played this is where we go from neanderthal to troglodyte to modern day neanderthal <laughs> right we when you can start to access that part of the brain where you can start to to ask questions, look at the stories that are running through your brain when you've regulated. Now the game starts. So wh what are you finding when, when, when you get to that place where you're like, okay, I'm calm, I'm calm, I, I'm calm. <laughs> you, you mentioned the Patriot Missile game. We do this within the stack. There's the work, there's, there's many different forms of this. People do it in, in coaching and counseling, but what are you finding, uh, whether it's a Patriot Missile game or not, what are you finding, the questions that you're asking yourself, uh, what, what's, what does the process look like? Uh, maybe just without like, asking the specific questions, <clears throat> what, are you, um, what are the questions that are coming out that are benefiting you the most? So, it, yeah right from what the story is right now and then yeah we call it around the block right so <laughs> what is basically it's a, you know the stack in the patriot missile game like what's the opposite story and then running around to what's aligned with you so okay now i'm looking at what are my values what is my what is my mission now that i'm super clear on what that is with well both of them especially the values because without the values i can't even formulate a mission at all so and then a story based on that and then what do i actually want <laughs> and so just running around that entire block and then ending up with a revelation of man of something that serves me so 
in this instance, it was, you no, know, like, go create something based on this story. <laughs> now that I've reframed it. Cool. And that's so I, I think what, what I, for those people that have no idea what we're talking about, I think what I heard you say is you were able to look at the story that you were telling yourself in your head about the situation you were experiencing. Mm -hmm. You were able to uh, come up with some sort of um, um, a judgment that you had imposed that yep. you were looking for evidence to support and it was creating a negative spiral. And then by asking a certain number of questions, you were able to look at it differently. And yep. I think, you know, depending on the types of questions, the whole purpose of doing these types of processes is to be able to look at what's actually happening for truth by looking at it from different perspectives. So, uh, first of all, we like to judge other people when things come up, don't we? So, oh, yeah. I think one of the first things, whether it's the stack or the Patriot Missile game, we look at it, we try to look at it with empathy from the other side, and we look at, well, where am I doing this? Right? And particularly if you're projecting and chucking garbage at somebody else, it's, it's an interesting and um, an opening, a mind opening experience when you look at, all right, well, one of the reasons why this is triggering me is I'm doing the same thing and this is where it's coming from. That empathetic stance is not something that you and I were ever taught, was it? No, no. Empathy for anything, for that matter. <laughs> no, so, like, fair enough. Right? Like sympathy is one thing where you're feeling sorry for yourself or feeling sorry for somebody else, but being empathetic towards somebody and where, yeah, looking where they're coming from and why you're doing the same thing in a totally different area. Totally. And then, <laughs> and then what we do is we look at, we, you and I talk a lot about the gap. So oftentimes we get triggered or we, we experience dissonance or dis-ease because we're, where we are right now doesn't line up fully with where our brain feels we should be. So we're telling should stories about another person, a place, an experience, or where we feel we should be. And that's creating all kinds of other stories and triggers that are going on. So we look at delusions and fears, and we tell yet another story. And so we've got three different stories that are going on that we can examine. And then after we've kind of reframed things, we can look at what you just said was, what actually is important to me? What are my values? What is my actual mission in life? Clarity precedes everything, and I think this is where many of us get lost. This is where anxiety, frustration, resentment, a lot of these things come from is that we have these feelings, yet what happens is we end up getting lost just in the feelings because we, we we forget which direction we're captaining our ship. So telling ourselves a story about the situation that's actually aligned with our values and our mission, what does that do for you when you when you create that story, Nick? It oh it just reframes the whole situation and I just calm down and I'm able to move forward in yeah, I'm just able to move forward in a productive manner. Cool. <laughs> and it that's the cool part to me is not is the not reacting. And then seeing where yeah, just seeing where I want to go. And I love it. That's the cool part. So it to me what it, it, it brings everything into perspective where I can I can act with intent now. I can react with intent to other because something else is going to get thrown at me the next day, which it did with a letter that got sent to my mom and dad. But if I was still in a place of negative from the first, from the first, to this first trigger, right? Two days later, I would still be in that place. You would still be investing time and energy, right. both in a situation that could be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. You could be telling stories that are destructive and taking you away from the things that ultimately are important to you in life, correct? Right, and so the last two days I've been able to, yeah, carry on with my life the way that I want it, instead of consuming in areas that don't serve me. So, 
and it, it's just it just goes to show that nobody's perfect right i am i am not i have not any better than anybody else it's just implementing the tools in a certain way because they work for me and something works for everybody you just have to find what it is and if you the worst thing that you can do is just sit and not do anything sit and spiral i mean how many people that are listening to this right now have sat and spiraled in something have gone into frustration resentment anger and just sat in a downward spiral or I mean, the other side of this is sometimes we can sit in an infatuation as well, excited about something, not really looking at the other side of the, the perspective. And then you realize, wow, that was the wrong decision as well. What, I, what I'm talking about, I think, is whether it's business or family, what happens is there's, there's so many different things that come into the, this little Neanderthal brain, right? the less clarity and certainty we have about the direction that we're going, it's easier to knock you off course and you live in an emotional roller coaster. That's number one. And number two is because there's so many things that come in to distract us. If we don't have a tool or we don't have tools and, and uh, mechanisms and procedures to be able to reframe and then realign us back to the direction that we want to go life and traction moving in the direction that we want to control gets kind of hard doesn't it oh it does you could have all of that together and left to your own devices still fail right and that's the cool part about the the, the men of iron movement right is the weekly check-ins every week right where you think that you're still cruising where you want to go but then when you're there sitting you're calling you out on your ship <laughs> and, then, and then it's like, ah, oh, no. Okay, I thought I was good. So it's having that, it's, it's all of it combined together. So the tools are great. You can still use it, but you can still veer off track left to your own device. <laughs> totally. It's basically okay, so, what it is. so here's my question for you. You had to hit quite a pit in your life before you started to jump into this type of work, mm -hmm. right? So people are listening to this. Um, and some people, I remember still saying that I, you couldn't get me to meditate. You couldn't get me to, to dive deeper into my personal growth or personal development. Like there's no way, like I, I, I'm good. I got it. Life is okay. Um, what are you noticing now with, uh, the men and women that you're working with? What, what are the commonalities, uh, or what are some of the observations you're making? It's. The ones that, yeah, it's just surrendering to the, the process and trusting the process. And, yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm noticing. So the ones that bought into that and are trusting it are the ones seeing the results. It's hard, uh, though, isn't it? It's because super hard. And so the perfect example is not setting uh, or fighting the process to set actual 90-day targets. So if we don't know where we're going, it's really hard to stay on track when you don't know <laughs> where you're going. So, and again, it's not pointing any fingers. It's not, it's just, it's just everyone does it, everything on their own time. And right. yeah, and that's part of the journey. It's part of the journey, right? Did a podcast with one of our other brothers yesterday and trusting the process and that dude's on fire, right? Making some big decisions in life. Big decisions, but having the tools and then having the accountability and the, the group mentality, being able to push him forward in the right direction. And make, he, so he can make the right decision based on himself. And that's what a lot of people I see not getting out of the movement is that it's up to you. <laughs> it's up to you doing the work yourself and then making your own decision. That's where you're, that's where you're getting the fruit. None of us are telling anybody to do anything. It's everybody in the whole movement is making their own decisions based on their values now and their mission because it's important to them. So that's the cool part about it. And I would say that, you know, unless you hit some form of significant rut in life, um, it's tough to get off the patterns, behaviors, and the habits that, that we all have because we think they're working for us. So 
it's it's often difficult to get people to actually do the depth of work that is necessary in order to really push in the direction. So for those of you that are listening to this that are either deep in a pit or you're just finding the traction, like you're just not getting the traction. It feels like you're running on a treadmill. You can't quite get yourself moving in a direction. I want you to consider for a second. You're probably not digging deep enough into the questions that we ask. And I want to encourage you because when we do the uh, reset, the quarterly reset in July, we get about, I don't know, anywhere from 20 to 50 people that start into the work and they start it and they, a vast majority of them half ass it and their results are what, Nick? Well, lackluster and then yeah. they fall off. Uh, right? That's it. And it's again, it's nothing. You're just not you're just not there to the point where you want to move forward with it. And it's what we keep trying to say is, please don't wait till that. Don't be like me and wait till you get served the divorce papers to actually say, hey, can I have help? Can I <laughs> please help me? And it's not saying that you're doing anything wrong. It's just that you want better. You want this. You want better. And that's the that's just the reality. Is There's people that are listening to this right now, Nick, that are sitting here going, yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> I know. At what point does is it going to take for you to step up and become a man or woman, in that case, of iron, and actually start to do the deep work in order to drive your life into a direction that you're in control of, but you're willing to let go of the patterns, habits, and behaviors that have gotten you as far as you have in life? All right. So... Mm -hmm. Um, anything else you got this week, my friend? No, I think, well, it's, it's a, we're about halfway through another quarter. Well, exactly halfway through another quarter. And it's just, it, it just goes to show how quick time flies. So I'm now 41 and that month and a half, right? It just flew by like that. And that just, I just, I don't want to live a life where I look back and, it's not what I wanted to do. Like just being, I don't want to have that feeling ever again. So let's pick things that are, that are on fire with us and aligned with our values and our mission. And if we don't know what that is, hit okay. Doyle up or hit myself up and let's work through some stuff and let's just dive a little deeper. So yeah, time flies and that's, it's unreal, isn't it? <laughs> so no, your kids deserve all of you, and you deserve the life that you want. So let's make it happen. Awesome, Nick. Brother, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Have a wonderful week, my friend, and enjoy. Yeah, you too. Appreciate you. Bye for now, man.